have butts on the internet, really? I like big butts. Okay, let's see. Yo, yo, what's up, my good people? Welcome to another episode of Kidnapping Comedians to Talk About Love. <laughs> Our favorite subject. <laughs> um, today, I kidnapped Keenan Floyd. This is a kidnapping. Hello. It was, uh, it was a little bit of a struggle, but not really. Just, you know, a little. We had to, like, work out the times and get it right. And then I had to strangle him and bring him over like a good kidnapping. Um, but he liked it, so it was okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. What happens, what, what happens when the kidnapper gets stuck in traffic? Does that, does that cut down on the momentum of the kidnapping? <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's a part of the kidnapping, oh. especially in L.A. <laughs> Every kidnapper in L.A. has to has add to. an hour of traffic to yes, do. kidnapping time. Exactly. Um, it's much cooler over here, though, right? You came from North Hollywood? Yes. I mean, not cooler, like, you know, temperature-wise. Temperature-wise. <laughs> not, not the people or anything, temperature-wise. Um, okay, so, well, I don't know too much about your love life or anything, um, so we're just going to go with the flow. Um, are you in a relationship right now? I actually just ended a relationship. You look like you're on trial for like. No, I did. I actually, <laughs> um, I actually just got out of a, I just got, got out of a relationship. Um, I'm a man of few words. You so, are. Yeah. Oh God. So there wasn't a lot said. Okay. At the end. What do you mean that they are man? You didn't explain to each other why you were breaking up or how, like how, give me more details, please. Well, okay, so so you guys know of, you know, the different love languages. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they have love languages like um, uh, the love language of service or whatever. Yes. Service, yeah. Service I don't know to what, others. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your love language is, but is it services? Um, I think it's, yeah, probably services. Like, that would included what, like, cooking and, you well, know, like, stuff like that or, like... I think it applies to, I think it, it applies differently to different people because like, for example, that's not necessarily my love language. I don't even know what my love language is, but it's nice when people do things for you, right? So yeah. anyway, this yeah, young yeah. lady's love language was services, right? Okay. And it was opening the door for her to get into the car and opening the door to go inside and cooking. Oh, and she liked that. She that's liked what she like done to her. What? Oh, that's what she wanted. So, so when I so when she says so when I say love language is service acts of service to her, it's do things for me, right? And right, sometimes right. it's not necessarily reciprocated. Oh, um, I I'm not a big talker on the phone, so it was definitely a challenge. She wanted me to talk to her on the phone every day, mm. um, so it was definitely a challenge for me. Why to not? Do that. What, what's what's wrong with talking on the phone? Like nothing. I just I'm just not a person that talks on the phone. Why? A whole lot. I don't know. I um, I don't like holding things to my face. How could you label yourself this way? As not talk, wanting to talk on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an incredible texter. Well, sometimes, you know, it's good to hear somebody's voice. I'm a surgeon. That's the problem today with people, you hold, know? Hold like, on. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me tell you. Because we've lost each other in this world of text. And texts, you know, as, as, as great as they are, but you... I think connecting with someone, even just hearing their voice, is very important in a relationship, especially if you guys are both busy or you're traveling. Come on. Yes. You I, travel a lot I, for I your agree. job. I agree, but... Uh, As a comedian. I agree, but we talked on the phone maybe three times a week. Other other times we would see each other, right? So recently, so, so recently it was her birthday, and um, I spent five days with her. From Thursday until Monday. Okay. And, uh, you know, we we did a lot of good things. I took her to Spire 73 yeah, for yeah, dinner. Yeah. Um, the gifts I got were kind of late, uh, but I got her some roller skates and I got her some Fendi sunglasses. Okay. Had them delivered directly from Italy and all that shit, right? Okay. And then um, after the Monday after we hung, we went to the Getty. That's what we went to the Getty Center. And uh, that Monday, uh, we hung out, and Tuesday and Wednesday, I was busy with some work stuff. Okay. So we were just texting Monday and Tuesday, right? Yeah. The detail that I did mention was she had gotten Dave Chappelle tickets. Oh. For the Hollywood Bowl. Dave Chappelle for the Hollywood Bowl. She oh, got shit. Dave Chappelle tickets like a week or two earlier before her birthday. Oh, shit. And, busy. and. Yeah, and. We get the Thursday, which was the day of the show. Yeah. 
And uh, I texted her in the morning and I said, hey, look forward to going tonight. How about you come to my place and we can go to the Hollywood Bowl for my place because I'm closer. Okay. Didn't hear anything. Okay. An hour before the show, at 5 o'clock or so, so two hours before the show, we... Uh, oh, this is recent. This yeah. was like last week. So I hit her up. Okay. And uh, did nothing. I gave her a call. Nothing. And then she said, I sold the tickets. And I said, why did you sell the tickets? And she says, long story, I'll explain later. So that weekend, she goes to Palm Springs with her friends for her birthday, and I call her on the phone... And she said to her that she had heard from me all week. So that's why she sold the tickets. What? Even though you guys were texting? Even though we talked on the phone and I saw her on Monday. And we were texting Tuesday and Wednesday. Did she go with somebody else? Like, did you know if she still went or not? No, she sold the tickets. She sold the tickets. She sold the tickets. But... But why would she... Why wouldn't she just, like, check in with you and be like, you know, hey... I haven't heard from you. you. Do you still want to go? I think she Unless was... Unless you got a lot of money for the tickets. I, I mean. think she was tr- either either that or maybe she was trying to punish me for not... Punish you? People don't do that. Yeah, I think it's a thing. Some people do. I think it's a thing. And, and again, this is not necessarily... I'm not bashing her or anything. Very nice. So... If you want to hear their voice, go visit. See the face, too. I... Reconnecting. Okay, good. So... Okay. Um, what she did know... Okay. Was that a friend of mine... Yes. Who's my OG in comedy opens for Dave now. OG and comedy. So I hit him up before, like a week or so before the show, and I said, yo, we are coming to the show, but can we come, because Dave always has an after party after all his big shows. Okay. And we said, yo, could we come to like the after party? Thanks for the invite. And it's my girl's, well. Okay. Yeah. Please comment your girl. No. It, it's, yeah. It's my girl's birthday. Could we do like a happy birthday song or like something, right? And it turned out that Stevie Wonder was going to be at the party, right? Damn. So, did go to the show, but I went to the after party. Okay. And Stevie Wonder was there. Damn. And he did sing. And it was incredible. But, about after that, I said, you know what? I don't think this is for me. I don't think this is a relationship for me. I don't like I don't like being in a relationship where I feel like if I make a mistake there's gonna be like repercussions. What mistake? Like it wasn't even a mistake. It was just like that was like that was just so weird. Like well, it's just well, weird. You weren't even it wasn't like you intentionally didn't like reach out to her or like but like why can't she call you too? Like it works both ways, you know what I'm saying? Like what I don't understand. I I <sighs> I think sometimes... And you know what? It was my birthday last week, too. You know, I, I, I would have appreciated the invite to the after party if that was the case. I, and I, that was... Go- you know, Stevie Wonder could have said me did, happy see, birthday. if I would have known. Now <sighs> I, now I know. Jeez, so I did say happy birthday to... You did, you did. Enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Okay, how long was this relationship with this girl? Um, it was since February. So it was... Uh, so what nine months? Nine, nine months. months. So February. you had like a cause semi quarantango. Yeah. Semi. February. Uh, February, March, March April, April, May, June. June, July. How did you guys um, meet? September. We met on Hinge. Hinge. What's a Hinge? Hinge is a dating app. Oh. You're supposed to delete it when you uh, find your soulmate. Is this like Bumble? You can act. Well, men can actually talk. Oh, <laughs> so oh yeah, because the woman has to talk first, right? Like, hey, you know, I think, do you like that one or? I think some women forget that uh, you have to actually you have to speak first on Bumble. Yeah, no. Oh, and then they match you, and then they, they match it, and, and then they, they just, just sit, sit there, there for like two days, and then they don't say anything. And then you guys can't say anything to them. You right? can't say anything to them. I mean, and, 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 that's that's so weird. Why would you? Why would the girl you know match you and then yeah, not say anything? Well, I think. And this is just I mean, my I guess theory. maybe they have too many matches. Maybe too many matches, but I think sometimes we as people, I think we say what we think should be, but we react to the way things are. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, for example, a lot of guys now, they're like, oh, it's hard for me to go up to a lady in the bar because I'm scared what she'll say. And you talk to the women, and they're like, we want guys to come up to us in the bar and say something to us. Yeah. And no one's talking to us anymore, so... Well, that's what I say. I have a joke about it, that it's like, everybody, all the guys in L.A. are like, hashtag scared, too. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, but there's some. Of, there's there's some. There's of still us. some that are. There's some of us that. in the streets that, that enjoy <laughs> approach talking women. To approach women. Yeah. But, well, because then everybody's hiding behind their little, you know, whatevers, you know, and like they're saying whatever they want, and then they go in real person or real life, and you're like, you know. You just, like, yeah, they have no balls or they're going to get smacked in the mouth. I don't know. Because they're saying things on the phone that they would never say in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when it's time to then actually go and talk to somebody. Yeah, they've claimed Then they're like, oh, I can't say Say something nasty about this girl to her face. So I'm not going to say anything at all. And let me just comment on one of her posts and make her feel like shit. (laughs) Instead, no, I'm just kidding. Have you you ever seen uh, The Social Dilemma? Yes. Well, there's a scene in The Social Dilemma, which is a great documentary on Netflix about social media, where it has a scenario of uh, a boy seeing a girl. I call them boys and girls because they're in high school or whatever. A boy sees a girl that he likes in person, Mm -hmm. right? And the way the algorithm works is that it tries to keep you uh, addicted to social media. So instead of actually having a normal interaction with the person you interact with them through social media, right? Yeah. So the part in the scene, the boy actually musters up the courage to go up and talk to the girl, but then he gets a notification from Facebook or whatever that that girl liked one of his posts. Okay. So he goes on social media and he's like looking at her. Then he goes to her po- her page and starts looking at her post and getting liking all her stuff and stuff. So instead of him actually talking to her, going up and talking to her, he's spending his time on his phone, and by the time he looks up, she's gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's what's happening now, and I have a feeling that sometimes when we go into these relationships based on what we're going off of social media, I think there's an unrealistic expectation that some of us have when we go into relationships. Yeah. So hence... So hence, well, because you're like fantasizing about this person in your own way, whatever like suits your fantasy. So then it becomes suits your fantasy. Your fantasy. <laughs> it, it becomes <laughs> I want a woman that does X, Y, and Z, and if she doesn't do any of these things, then I can swipe left on her right. in life, right, and find someone who will, and find someone who will, because we're used to looking through filters and stories and stuff. But then when you're with that person. You're like, well, I really don't like this person because this person is not doing everything I want. Which, in reality, it might not even be that you don't like them. It's just you have this these expectations that can never be met. Right. Because we're all flaw, flawed humans. I mean, beings. that's not... So, are you back on Hinge now? Or not oh, yet? I haven't, gotten, I haven't gotten back on Hinge yet. No, or not I'm on, on these, I'm on these streets. Out in the streets. Okay, so... Um... Did you tell, like, how did you tell her? Like, what did you say? Like, were you like, man, I just don't want to do this anymore? Or you were like, how did you do that? Like, what did Well, like I said, I'm a man of few words. Oh, I, uh, I talk. Well, most men are when they have to break up no, with you. No, no, I'm like, a man of few words I don't know what general. to do. How long was this really up? We said since February. Okay, yep, yep, yep. So, we, uh, so we had a conversation. The last conversation we had was when she was at Pope Swings. And I said, we should talk when you get back. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and uh, that conversation never happened because oh. she lives 20 miles away from me and I was in the area. So I had a key and I had a garage door opener. So I went, I left it at her place. Okay. And I left. That was on a Saturday. And basically I was waiting because she was coming back on a Monday. So basically I was waiting for a phone conversation or something on Monday. Yeah. It's like you would see the key. You would see the... You'll see the garage door opener. And you would know that I left your shit. Let's put two and two together. Let's have a conversation. Figure. I mean, who knows? Maybe the relationship. So what did she do? Did she avoid you? No, she never, never phone calls. She blocked me on Instagram. Oh, Lord. She knew. She was like, what an asshole. He just left this shit. She here. blocked me on Instagram. Okay. And the conversation <laughs> has not been had. Does that hurt your feelings? Uh, yeah, I think it did. Um, if I could be, if, if I could be honest, I. It's one of those things where you, a relationship goes both ways. You you would like for a person to actually show some type of, like, feelings for you. You know what I mean? Like, the, the fact that I left it there, I mean, obviously, there was something that hurt me. And it, and it wasn't... And it wasn't necessarily... It wasn't the Chappelle tickets. That wasn't the, that wasn't the issue. It, I, I think every relationship has something that represents how the relationship is going. 
So. So were you afraid that she was actually pulling away from you? Um. No, not really. I I, I think for a while I felt that she didn't like give a fuck about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why and that's why I'm saying it goes both ways. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. It goes both ways in the sense of you like acts of service. Yeah. And stuff like that. But but you can't be the you have to give and receive. But right? if I'm always yeah. if I'm always giving and then I say hey I would like to do this or how would you like to do this and you're always like oh I want to do that because I want to. Well yeah. That's fine. Like you have the choice to say I don't want to, but then at the same time it's oh you don't give a fuck about me. Like you just want me to just well, come and, and give. Well I think you know I don't know I mean I don't know what you guys think out there if anybody's like listening to what's going on but he just. Broke up with a girlfriend, like, very recent, right? Couple yeah. A couple of days ago. And I guess you wanted to talk, but it actually, the talk never happened. But then you dropped off her keys and garage door opened her without her being home. And I don't know, I would feel really hurt by that, you know, if I was on the receiving end. Like, couldn't you wait? Or, like, this is definite already? Like, we didn't even have a conversation. But you think she was pulling away... So, I don't know, like, do you feel like, you know, that maybe you just made it easier for her, and she's like, fuck it, whatever, and then you guys don't talk at all, but this is what I'm saying, like, this is how people, they don't, solve, like, nothing gets healed, you know, we are in relationships to heal each other's stuff, and when there's no communication, you're man of many words, it's gonna be a problem, and it's gonna continue until, you know, you figure out those things that kind of... And I think what happens too is I think I I, I think that when you because in this case when the conversation was brought up it was never like I actually made a statement where I said hey I feel like that when I ask you to do things conversations get tense yeah and the response was oh this is a tense conversation for you or this is an argument and I said no I didn't say this was an argument it's you get resistant when I ask you to say things. And then it turned into, oh, okay. So so even when, when that's what I'm saying. Like, even when my concerns were expressed, it was, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. So then it's like, all right, well, I'm just going to leave the keys and, and you can, you know. And then it's not, but. So do you want to be friends with her, though? Like, I feel like a lot of people, like, maybe want to be Friends, you can soften the blow, but make no mistake, it's still a blow. Yeah, it is. Takers are the most emotional, available people to date. Don't get sucked into their world. It's about tone and delivery with empathy. Yes, I agree with all that. And you know, I am such a giver too. Like I give, give, mm-hmm. give. Like, and that's why I really, I just kind of, you know, stop dating at all because. I think it was taking over, you know, my life, you know, and I lose focus on myself and that's not good for me, right? If I, I'm still learning how to balance that part of myself where I, because I love making people, you know, happy and Mm -hmm. like, you know, you want to, you know, be, like, I'm just a giver, right? And it's hard for me to receive, which I think a lot of givers are, but there are those takers that just take, 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 and then you're like, wait a minute. I get nothing in return from this. Like, not even... Like, what am I doing here? Well, I think you're right. I, I think I... It is hard to receive from others because even... I mean, there are some... Like, for a person to buy something for me. Like, especially when it comes to, like, a woman. Like, it's like when I'm going out with a woman and she'll be like... And we're not dating at all. She's just like, oh, I'll get you a coffee or whatever. It feels strange yeah. for that to happen. Yeah. To me, like I remember, I was I was meeting a friend yesterday for a writing session, and we were at a coffee shop, and she said, "Oh, whatever you want to get, just because you got me last time, let me get this." And even then, it like felt I was appreciative, but it, like felt wrong. It felt like I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I." Wait, where, like, did, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Pennsylvania. From, I'm from the south. I'm from Alabama. Alabama. My yeah. friend just moved to Alabama. Um, Sorry. What? Sorry, <laughs> um, that must have been what it was like growing up in Alabama. I mean, growing up in Alabama was cool because I was a child. But were you like around like a lot of like I don't know why I think everybody's racist in the South, but like I know there's probably 
pockets of like maybe but were they like you know scary not not where i was around pennsylvania where i grew up was scary really? pennsylvania pennsylvania is a very racist state really yeah Okay. Central Central Pennsylvania is a very very racist state. Well, that's how you. So that that was your experience. Yeah, like, north the northeast. Don't don't get it. Where did you go to high school there? Yeah, I went to high school there. And and the thing about uh, like growing up in Pennsylvania is one year I remember having friends, and then like the next year of school I did. not You didn't. And it was because like, and it was literally because, and I found out more about this recently. Well, not recently, within the last since I we've been adults. That a lot of people's parents were basically telling their kids not to hang out with me because I was black. Like, it, like that's that's so weird. That's that's like what Penn, like that's what Pennsylvania is like. And even if you go there now, kids like some other kids I went to school with and and are still. It's a cultural thing. Like it's taught culturally in the particular place I grew up. Where did you grow up? Where I grew up in a town called Montoursville, Pennsylvania, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Where the hell is that? It's central Pennsylvania, two hours. Oh, like above Harrisburg. Oh, okay. Yeah, and 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 even kids now, that are now adults, kind of still have that same. You know what I mean? Like well, yeah. You know, I was talking about this at my little, this little party, um, but. <laughs> I was talking because, you know, I don't know how we got into, you know, these kind of subjects. They can get a little bit, you know, heated at times if mm -hmm. within. But, like, we were, I was saying that it comes within the families. Like, if families could teach something different to their children, like, the you know, like that, you know, not, like, stay away from this certain type of people or, or say, like, oh, these people are mean or they're this or they're that. Like, it's just... It starts, yeah, from saying, and even, like, because she was saying that there was a study that, um, I guess, of 100 girls, and they had, like, a black doll and a white doll, and they said, which one was most beautiful, and everybody picked the white doll, and I was like, even the black girls? And they were like, yeah, because they're, and I'm like, how can they, like, why, why, how is, how did they learn that, that that was, like, more beautiful to, you know, like how did where did that like how where did that even well, come from? Just like just like parents can teach their kids to be racist, they can teach them not to be racist and not like performative. You know what I mean? That's what I'm because saying. there's a difference. I will say this: you can teach your kids not to be racist, but don't teach your kids to don't teach your kids to be the saviors of black people either because that's also racist. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you mean like those woke, those woke white yeah, people. Yeah, because it's like, still... Oh, because it's okay? It's still <laughs> you thinking that you're... It's still... You're still teaching your kids that you're better than people that are different than you. Yeah. So it's like you got... It, it's one of those things where you, it has to be different. If we're all human beings, then we're all human beings, period. Like, that's it. That's no... And just at the same time that sometimes a lot of times black kids will feel like they're not worthy because of the kids that they spend time with in school. Yeah. Because kids don't have filters, so they'll just repeat like what their parents says. They'll, right. be, they'll be like, my mom says blah, 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 blah. That's what the, I'm saying. And then the kid goes home and then he's like talking to his parents about it. And sometimes what happens with black parents as well, sometimes there's, they don't really, sometimes they don't really give like a solution to like combat it. So yeah. sometimes it's, Sometimes we're not taught how to have, like, high self-esteem about ourselves because sometimes we like, well, that's just the way it is in America or whatever. And it's just yeah. like, no, it doesn't have to be acceptable. Yeah. So, so that's probably, I don't know, that's probably why they picked the white doll over the black doll. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I didn't. And I didn't know when that study was. That was just what she said. But do you put, prefer black girls over a deeper or <laughs> black dolls over white doll? <laughs> what, or, like, have you mostly dated... You know, like what do you what do you prefer? Does I've, it matter? Or? It doesn't matter. I mostly dated uh, I mostly dated black women. Um, but you want somebody who shares your same views on life and right? Yeah, and, but but I mean, technically, uh, technically anybody can share your views. I, I think sometimes people get I think people get harped up on. I think a lot of people get harped up on, on their race, and I think that's where the disconnect comes from. Well, yeah, because everybody's just, like, human, right? So Yeah. Well, like, for example, it's like if you date... If, if you date... Um, 
Oh, how accurate would you consider the movie American History X and its depiction of racism in America? Well, you know what's ironic about that is that all of the kids in my Femme school Disney. love American History X for like the wrong reasons. So I don't know. What are, what are the wrong reasons? What do you mean? Because American History X is, has literally a scene of a like neo-Nazi stomping a black person to death. Oh, God. That's and pe- horrible. And people are like, and, and going to my school, people were like, oh, have you seen American History X? Yeah, that movie's awesome. But then, like, everyone at my school was racist. So it wasn't like, it's they didn't even get the point of the movie. When I finally saw the movie, I saw the movie when I was in college. When I finally saw the movie, I was like, oh, shit. No, yeah, that's not okay. That sounds, like, horrible. Well, but so I don't. Is that really? But I mean, is that really? Well, I think it can be. Like, look, people are so mean like that. They can be right. They can be so mean and like like that shit. Like, especially those neo Nazi people. They're they're nuts. I mean, even to gay people too. They're so mean. Yeah, I think there's pockets. I think there's definitely pockets in America. Um, I, I think there is still. I mean, maybe not as much violence now, but I mean, I you know. Humans are unpredictable, so yeah. So, but you mostly date black girls, basically. Okay, so back, to, so back to that. So back I to dated, love, since it's about love so, and not neo Nazi so, killing people. So I dated, uh, I've dated black girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've dated almost everybody, but recently I've just I've been going out with black girls. Um, the only reason I mentioned when when it comes to like finding, don't let like. Don't let, like, race and all that petty shit, like, get in the way. No. Because, like I'm saying, like, when, when even when you talk to, like, white girls, sometimes you'll talk to some white girls, you'll be like, oh, I like black guys because they got big, what, whatchamacallits. And it's like... Well, yeah. I mean, yes, but I also like walks on the beach in the movies. Like, I don't understand <laughs> what that has to do with anything. Do you like tacos? It's like, let's... <laughs> I guess that's all they care about is dick or what? Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, is yeah, sometimes. I mean, because like, I mean, like, like, not all black guys have big, big ones either. No, you know? not all. Not, not all, but some do. I mean, and I know guys like to talk about their penises all the time, but um, well, I, but I, girls I just, are bringing it up now anyway. And is it different? Like, what about like dating in LA versus like I don't know how long have you been out here? I've been in LA for three years. Okay. Um, and is it's hard to? I mean, is it hard to find someone? You know, because you travel a lot for comedy too. Right? I think. I think. Here in LA, it's it's a. Uh, I think we're more hookup. I think we're more like a hookup city. Than no wonder why I'm so single all the time. <laughs> no wonder I, why I haven't hooked up with anyone. Don't worry, hookup society. I'll, I'll take you. I'll take you out to get some tacos. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it over a fish and shrimp taco. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Um, okay. It's actually a really nice taco place in Santa Monica. Is there? I should go. Yeah, we should go before I go home. Hi, um, hi Lupe, hi. Oh, I don't know. Okay, um, new money. Mike is in the house. What you call it? What is it? What is what? What you call it? I love what I used to love what you call it. I used to eat what you call it and ru- and sour cream and onion ruffle potato chips together when I was in high school. Oh, that sounds disgusting. <sighs> yeah, I know. Don't worry, I was bullied. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I think that they were a hookup because yeah, we this, hookup because this. Well, look at all the apps, and everybody's just, like, doing this, and it's like, this is, you know. Because even, but then, when you are in relationship with people in L.A. that want relationships, from my experience, a lot, some people want all your time, which is impossible in L.A., because if I'm driving to your house... Right, but it's going to take an hour to get there. It's going to take an hour to get to your house, so then it's like, I have to work, then I have to come to your house... Then we have to go, if we're going out to eat, then we got to drive an hour to go out to eat. Yeah. But, okay, so in your relationship that you just had was about eight months. Like, would you think at that point you take the next step into, like, moving in together? Or, um, you know what I'm saying? What's up, George? Um, I mean, we never really... Cheers from Brazil. What's up, Brazil? What's up, Brazil? Um, <laughs> Cheers. Um, no, Portuguese. Um, I, well, I mean, I, I think eventually that, that's what. But do you want to get married? Like, is that the goal of dating or you just want companionship or you just want somebody to have sex with? Like, what is your, well, like, I, what are guys like, what's going on? I think in this, in this relationship, cause in this relationship, I think it was, marriage was a thing. Yeah. 
and then having kids was a thing, right? Okay, so but that I, was discussed in this relationship? Because I know we do live in, like, a hookup kind yeah. of station, nation over here. So. Like, 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 it wasn't like we were messing with other people, and we and there was conversations that were had, and I met her family and all that stuff. So, I mean, it, it seemed like it, it was getting pretty serious, but then it got to a It just got to a point where just every... It got to a point where I don't know if she was, like, sick of me or what, but it just got to... Well, don't you want to communicate? Don't you want to find out? Don't you, like, want to know? Aren't you going to be like, hey... Yeah. I know things, like, didn't end, like, you know, I don't know. I just don't want things to be weird. Like, can we talk and, like, yeah, see I mean, what's going I mean, on? Uh, can you talk to but, people? Can guys talk? Yeah, people? we can talk to <laughs> but, but, like yeah. I said, it goes, both, it goes both ways. It does. Because but, because it's at the same time, too. It's like, I want to talk. Like, I said... So, it was just me. And it doesn't. It doesn't need to go both ways at that point. And at well, that point, you know, she could be hurt too. You just drop some shit off. I don't know if I would reach. I'd be like, damn, you know. I but like I'm, you know, and I don't know who she is or how, what she does. But like I know for me, I would be like really like thinking about all the things I might have done wrong and like the exact same thing that I'm thinking about. Right, exactly. And nobody's reaching out because of the pride and the ego. Don't you guys see what's going on here? It's your pride and ego. Just. Reach out and who cares? Like, it's not even going to get back together or, you know, whatever. I don't know what's going to happen, but at least you'll, t- you know, talk some, it out. Some closure. Some closure and some communication. And, and I mean, who knows? Who and knows? she doesn't, you know, it wasn't even like she did anything wrong. Like, nobody, like, you know, killed anyone's, like, you know. I mean, there was no murder involved in the breakup in the end of the relationship. So, right. I mean, that's a good sign. There's no murder. No, no one's animal no got no killed. One, no one was cheated on. Yeah, no, no, one, no one's kidnapped. No significant others showed Except up. Except for you. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> you were to um, well, let's see what they're Nobody, going. nobody. Uh, Who is this Terrence Parker look like? That's Keenan Floyd. He's here right now. We're talking about him. Hey, who's program. Terrence Parker? Terrence Parker. I don't know. You're going to Google it right now? Yeah, let me Google it right now. Why? Cheers from Brazil. Oh, yeah. Hi, Glenn. What's up, you guys? Okay, yeah, we're talking. He just broke up, and they they had no closure, no communication, nothing, right? He just broke up, or he didn't even tell her why they broke up. He just dropped off keys, and, and I'm not like, I'm just rehashing. I'm not saying, you know, that's a good or bad thing, what you did, but um, <laughs> it doesn't sound great if you ask me. But there should be a little communication. I mean, and I mean, it's, def- it's definitely a way to get your point across. Uh, no murder yet. When the words, when the words mean nothing. Right. Oh, and Terrence I, Parker's a DJ. And you know, if it was me, I probably would have called you and been like, "What the fuck? Like, what is you pro- like? What are I you mean, fucking crazy? I, I like, would you have, just I dropped would... some shit off at my house. You didn't even tell me." But honestly, I would love for I will I will have love for her to call and yell at me so I can at least be like okay we're somewhere like you care I could be like yo you care so you you so maybe you think you she care lost that loving feeling maybe and no uh, and so I, you, I think it's been gone for a while I so think. and then you okay I get it yeah I think the loving feeling has been gone for a while so at this point even you reaching out to her would that make you feel dumb um. Not dumb, but like you know, like a like kind of. Shy, I don't know. Like shy, like no, uh, not shy. Not shy. I, what I, am I? What's the word I'm looking for? You know, like you know when somebody doesn't want to. You know when you think somebody doesn't, but you know I don't know. I mean, there's definitely so a lot of things that could have been done better on my part for sure. Mm. Um, I'm not saying. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying. What I did was right. All I'm saying is, uh, I did it. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, but, I think maybe if you're okay with that, then you can just move on. You know, move about the cabin. But um, back in these streets. If you're not, you know, if you want some like to be like. I mean, I don't know. You know, what do you even say? Like, yeah, you're. You know, I just felt like things are kind of. Weird. Do you want to do a role play? <laughs> do you want hey, to wait. Roll? I want to know. Should I should I send her birthday gifts back or should I give her the birthday gifts? You should give me the birthday gifts. We're role playing. I get oh, gifts. Oh yeah, that's right. Joanne. 
This is the part that's been given by. You should turn the sign around. I don't know how to turn the sign around. It's because we're live. Usually I have to go. get the sign remade. I have to like, I don't like Wait, can you actually take this off and move it? I could flip it. I could flip it around, I guess. But when when we go live, it goes this way. And then in my, in the editing room that I, you know, struggle with, I I flip it back around. Who has OCD? Glenn, she fixes that sign when she uploads it, but I agree. I know, but what am I supposed to do? It's just the live video and it goes backwards. How do I fix it? I don't know, you have to I guess it. I can flip it. But but you guys have like made your OCD in this uh, comment. <laughs> I know. Are you listening to what we're saying? Our conversation I'm with trying to tell you head. guys. I, I'm trying to tell you guys that if, you know, if you, I don't know. He's saying it works both ways. And guys and girls and any relationship, right? I don't want to get anybody upset with the they, thems, theirs, and all the peoples, right? So we'll just all the peoples. I, well, I also communication is so important to to on both ends, right? And, and How I, can you? I don't want to make this. I don't want to make this into like a man versus woman thing either, because it's not that. It's right. literally two human beings with flaws. How do you? How do you make it better? Because you know, a lot of times you go, like, "Well, what are you women and, and men?" And it's like, no, it's not that at all. It's just in this particular situation. Yeah, that's, um, well, I would love to know if you guys ever talk again and, or would you ever run into her anywhere or? Probably. Oh, okay. Well, (laughs) (laughs) so, I mean, do you like, you know, is it hard to meet people with comedy? No, I feel like you would have a lot of like people that you meet. Uh, groupies are horrible. Groupies? What's it? What do you mean? You have, what is that? I don't have groupies, but the comedians that I travel with have groupies. Yeah. And uh, groupies need to... um, Groupies need to learn self-awareness. Yeah. Um, No one wants to hear your music. Music? And no one wants to hear your loud voice. Why they think that you could do something for them or something? No, sometimes what happens is they'll come, they'll try to come into the green room and then they'll be loud and, and want to dance and sing and hang out and party and all that stuff. And it's like, we just want to go home. Yes. Yeah, we just want to either go to the arcade. Or just go home to sleep. Or go to Waffle House or, or go home and sleep. Just. I've heard all the peoples in the, I haven't heard all the peoples in your Zoe's Ghost. It is Zoe's Ghost. Yes, you are OCD, Glenn. You said it best many years ago. Love is supposed to be free. Love. Yep, free. Love is supposed to be easy. It's true. It's free. It's love is supposed to be. When it gets complicated, people are like bus stops. There's always someone else. Yep. A term I learned on Eshak's podcast. Chuckle fucks? What's a chuckle fuck? Oh, he's talking about groupies. Oh, I... Those are, those are girls that follow comedians around and hook up with them. Chuckle fucks! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> That's so... Where are my chuckle fucks? Do you, do ladies do do lady comedians get chuckle get, fuck? get chuckle fuckers? I don't know. I get DMs. You get DMs. but like Sli- after the show, slid- slid- sliding in the after the show. Like after the show, they slide into your DMs. No one actually comes up to you like after a show. No one like, really comes up to me. Two Greek girls came up to me after a show. A couple of uh, girls come up to me after a show. One girl they're, liked my hair. I was they're like, like, "You're so beautiful. Let's let's get out of here." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> what do I call you? <laughs> Are you my bitch or? <laughs> I mean, she can't be. That's <laughs> one girl after a show, she was like, "Your hair is so shiny." I was like, thanks. She's like, you want to go get tacos? I was like, did you hear a fucking word I said, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like my hair. The chicks who go to the comedy show just to fuck the comedians. Yes, I know. I, I, I figured that. Yeah, we just, yeah, that's crazy. But I guess it happens, right? They're just like, like you know, people who go see band members. And they'll like, literally come in the green room and be like, yeah, I know you're married, but we can fuck. And it's like. nuh that's gross. And yeah. then guys fall for it because you're so you're so lame. Like you're, the guys are so like. Weak. Uh, the crew that I hang out with don't. They don't. Well, that's good. I mean, I mean, guys and girls could fall for it. Like people, so all the peoples could fall for it. Yeah. <laughs> all the people. It's it's very. I'm just gonna stick to all the people. It's 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 and sometimes people don't know they don't respect people's personal space. So they'll try. They'll try to be. That's why the door. When every time women come into the door, make sure that the or men. Make sure that the door stays open. Yeah. I mean, you seem like a gentleman, though. You seem like you treat women pretty... I don't know. I, like, I don't really know, you know, that much, but... Is that I her? I tried to. No. Who's Andy? 
No, it's my Andre. Um, hi, Andre. Um, so I feel like, I mean, I don't know, you know, exactly, but, you know, you know, girls, I can tell, I don't know, like, do you find that they're just taking advantage, you know? Did you feel like maybe there was a little, you know, I, you know, I don't know, maybe some girls take advantage and, or some, all the peoples, like, that maybe there's, there's no balance is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There wasn't a balance in the give and the take and then, you know, it shit go, the people start resenting each other and then they close down and then they... Well, I, I think, and this is why I'll say, um, I, I don't, I don't want to call it settling, oh. but sometimes I think that when people feel like they're settling, I think their attitude changes a little bit, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm, I have a settling face. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm dope. Uh, but anyway, uh, you're dope. Yeah, I'm dope. I'm good. I'm oh. cool. Yeah. I'm amazing. Um, but I guess if you want to get, you know, I think, you know, if you want to get married and have kids or do that whole thing or be, find somebody, I mean, you can't really plan that out anyway. But I do think a lot of people, you know, girls, especially in their 30s or, you know, very much like they think the clock is ticking. But once you feel like you're settling, then your relationship's over. Yeah. That's, that's in my opinion. You're like, once you feel like, oh, I, I'm just going to do this because this person's here, I think it's over. And I think what happens sometimes is I think when a person knows that they're settling for a particular person, they treat them accordingly, yeah. which doesn't make for a healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. And that's why when you have someone in the relationship that asks for things, that's yeah. like, oh, I would like you to do this for me. So are you going to take a little break now or are you just going to slip into the next vagina? <laughs> oh, no. I'm uh, First, I'm taking Joanne out for tacos. Um, <laughs> tacos. I'll take tacos. I love tacos. Yeah, because tacos are delicious. I'm looking forward to the tacos more than I am hanging out with Joanne. But that's but Joanne's a good friend. Is that a sexual thing? I'm not sure how to take the taco reference, but no, there's know. actually an amazing place in Santa Monica that serves great tacos. Oh, okay, good. I'm happy. Excited called to called hear. Uh, Blue Tacos. I think it's called Blue Tacos. Yeah, and they have seafood tacos. Yes. Okay, that you weren't being fresh. Uh, the tacos are fresh. <laughs> not fresh. Be, you're not fresh. You're stale. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so you're out in the streets though. But like you know, I've discussed this, and then we can like wrap this up. Um, but I've discussed this with um, other guys that like life is short. Fall in love with this dick. <laughs> you're funny. That's so breaking. <laughs> um, well, um, but like honestly, do you take a little break? Is what I'm saying. Like after your breakup with one girl, or like do you just slip into the next vagina like real quick? No, I uh, do I I focus like right now. I'm starting a company. I started a company, and we're in the midst of uh, building more finance and, and mounting our product our projects. We're a production company. I'm focusing more on my comedy career now, and I'm also working on a television show. Hmm. So, I have a pretty full slate. But my problem is, I need to take a break because I can't really be a hoe. Because I always end up in relationships. Yeah. Like, I'll be like, oh, I'm a hoe. Uh, and the first girl that I hook up with, we're in a relationship. Yeah. Like, I, I'll go into a club, and, yeah, I'm here to slay all this pussy. And then, like, the next day, I'm at brunch. Yeah. And we're like, we're so <laughs> we're in love. Drinking mimosas. And we're, uh, we're <laughs> drinking mimosas. <laughs> Glenn's on a six-year break, yeah. I'm on, like, a two-year break. But that's what, that's what I do, too. Like, I'm not very good out in the streets. Like, I'm not, like, a hoe like that. You know, I can't, like, I never, like... You know, you know, was like sleeping with like three guys at once, or like dating three guys at once, or anything like that. Like I can't. And then like yeah, I just like meet the one person I'm hooking up with. I'm like, you're the love of my life. <laughs> so dumb. you have to stop that. You have to stop letting them know that you care. I know. I don't want to play games. So Go good ahead. with all that. Um, I don't want to play games. I know like that's a part of the whole thing, and I just don't want. I have no time for it. Like I'm like if it's not. Free and easy and whatever, you know, where it's like we support each other and lift each other up and I don't know, then I don't want it. I'm not you getting You literally bored. lift for a living. Lift for a living. Lift each other up, exactly. A yes. spirit lifter. 
Well, do you have any shows coming up? We're going to end this thing, too. Good, Joanne. Doesn't belong to the streets. There is hope. Yep. Nope. I don't belong to the streets. Thank you, Bacon Media. Unless I can make some money. I don't know anybody out there. What, no, no, <laughs> but what, what corner you want me on? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm starting a podcast in January called Keenan's oh. Rant Report. Oh. Um, I'm going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 26th. Raleigh, what's up? 26, 27, and 28th, I believe, are the dates. It's going to be, our, it's the week of Thanksgiving, so it's that Thursday to Sunday yeah. of Thanksgiving week in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Nice, nice. And, um... What's up, Josh Shakespeare? That's, uh... That's My basically honey bunny. it for now. Oh, oh wait, week. Josh was there. Josh was here last week, and he's younger than you. He's 22, okay? And he was saying that the girl, younger girls are kind of like, you know, I don't know. Trash, I guess. Josh, like Josh we need you to, were saying trash? Was that what you were saying? We need to talk. Uh, I'm about to get a bunch of money. What? And uh, it's time to go after the 22-year-old. So. Uh, what do you mean? What does money have to do with that? What are you talking about? We're in LA. So wait, you think all the young girls would just want you for money? Oh. And if you're a good photographer. <laughs> yeah, <obviously, obviously, laughs> If you can video. <laughs> if you can videotape them. She's not oh, going to let you hit it. Up. Just focus on yourself. Josh. He's talking about me. Yeah. Josh, that's cause you, just because you came over to have sex and you got disappointed because my mom lives with me doesn't mean <laughs> that everybody comes over here to have sex with Josh, me. Josh. Josh uh, just came over with the wrong expectations. He did. He even admitted it. He was like, I came here to fuck. And she Josh, can't. <laughs> Josh, did you, uh, so did you uh, Wait, take I, her out for tacos? No, he didn't. He didn't even offer. To no, you? he didn't even offer. He just wanted to. He just wanted to make out. But this, wait, he's twenty two though. How old are you? He's young. I'm thirty eight. These young. These thirty eight. See, at least you get tacos first. You got to learn from the older see, guys. See, these Josh. young bucks, they don't want to give nothing. They no. just want to take. They just want to. They want to just get right in there. It's unbelievable. I was kidding. I really value our friend. <laughs> See, that's what so that's what someone says. Uh, may, that's Maybe what someone says when they know they ain't gonna get none. They're like, "Yeah, I value our friendship. <laughs> Let me know if if the next dude messes up so we can talk about it." The youngins just want money. Is that true? That's true, I guess. Right. Well, I mean, it's a, the youngins, it depends. I mean, the young girls lot. want the older guy. To kind of take care of them, right? I feel like that's how I acted when I was younger. And then, um, or like that's the idea, right? Because fucking Cinder fucking Rella, right? So yeah. that was the problem. Do and you, then. Do you allow these dudes to talk to you like this in your comments? What's what's happening? Who? Oh, what? What do you mean? I was kidding. I mean, what are you talking about? Maybe you should have come with me. My hair is good. Yeah, it's a Josh Shakespeare. He's always up for grabs. Um, what's up, Anthony? That's my first boyfriend, Anthony Casso. He was my first, very first boyfriend in high school. Oh, I beat up? up a lot of girls because of Anthony. We should have him come on and talk to him. We, we should, you know what? We're going to go live one day, me and you, Ant. We're going to work out our, our things. See, we broke up and it's good to communicate and find out all of the, you know, tragic. Hi, Ant. Hi, all the tragic. <laughs> Jeez, I'm a yeah. good friend too and I beat her up. I beat her up. You beat her up? <laughs> Yo, Bacon, Bacon just said, marrying what? your best friend just means you legally, legally got friend zone. <laughs> Is that true? That's funny. Mm -mm. You still have sex. You still have sex, Bacon. Jason Bacon. Anthony, did you take her out for tacos? No. No. He didn't. He took me out for tacos. We were in high school. We were in there, love. There was tacos in high school. There was no, to, well, I mean, where? No tacos that I knew. Not in Jersey, anyway. Um, but yeah, that was, <laughs> there was no tacos, but we definitely should do a live. Um, and I think that you should, are you writing down notes for your stand up? No, I just marrying best friend. That's what <laughs> I'm taking it. Bacon. bacon. He's taking your Barry and your best friend. Um, but you do get friends on, but why? Because you don't have sex anymore. This guy, I know this guy, he, he, ha he's married and ever since his, the daughter, he hasn't had sex like for six years or like seven, however old the daughter is. The daughter's like seven? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I bet his wife's getting it, but. I don't think so. Really? Like, do you think they cheat? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's put it this way. I've been in relationships where we started off the relationships high and heavy. And then uh, the latter part of the relationship, we just slept. Would you date someone who had children? 
Let's see if we can find a match for Keenan on here since this is the a kidnap comedian to talk about love because we, you know, I don't know. It hide depends. our emotions in our comedy. It depends on the kids, I guess. <laughs> so kids, it depends on the kids. It depends on like, like how the old actual, they are. Yeah, I guess. Would you date older woman? Woman, you're 38. Would you date someone in their 40s? I've gone out. Uh, I've gone out with someone uh, older than me. Oh. That, but however, again, it's about the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes when you go out with people 40 plus, they really, they're really stuck in their ways. You know what I mean? So sometimes you, you might, and it depends because there's a bunch of cool people in their yeah. 40s and stuff. Actually, they, you know, uh, know how to treat themselves finally. When you're in your 40s, you figure yeah. out how to make yourself happy. So if anybody's coming with some bullshit, you're like... Hey, I don't got time for this. Goodbye. However, a lot of people <laughs> I'll in their keep 40s, my happy life over here. A lot of people in their forties just want the want the sex. Yeah. Oh. Want to get pounded too? Oh, really? Yeah, but I don't have time. I was married already. Pound. I don't have time for no relationships. Oh, pounded. Wow. Okay. So I just you need to come over and take me to Pound Town. Pound Town. Yeah. I never heard of that one. Jason Bacon. What did he say? I was twenty one. and was with a forty five year old. How'd that go for you? He was Bacon. taking her to Pound Town. I guess, you know, they say when you're in your 40s, though, you get that, like, you know, little libido book. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be, like what, a, late 30s, late 30s to your... That's why the cougars are... Till, till you're 60, it's like you have sexual peaks. Yeah, yeah, you get sexual peaks. Women in their 40s are at their best. True, because they know how to, like, rock the boat, work the middle. Right? Is that true? Or, I mean, I guess when you're younger, you know, too, but... Um, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, so, well, you can see Keenan at those places that he mentioned, North Carolina. If anybody, I know we had Brazil here earlier. That's too far away. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to Brazil. Maybe we could go to Brazil one time. Yeah, we'll go. We'll do comedy in Brazil. I need to see the world like that. I want to do that. Her yeah. daughter didn't realize what was going on. Awkwardness. Wait. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. the girl went out with. Wait, the was the daughter? Was, <laughs> was the awesome daughter term? your age? Bacon. Was the daughter your age? The daughter was probably like... Oh, let's see. It's just... Kyle said work the middle. Is that a boxing term? I'm like, no, that's Beyonce. Hello? Rock the boat. Work the middle. <laughs> no? No, Beyonce? Yeah, Is that Beyonce? Hello? Um, um, oh, follow me on Instagram, too. At Keenan. Oh, yeah. Floyd. What's the Instagram? Uh, Keenan J. Floyd. Katie Follow Keenan on Instagram. I love you guys. The daughter was 18 and you were 21. Oh my God. That's banana sandwiches all over town. Um, that's uh, Aaliyah. Are you, uh, bacon, <laughs> is your name R. Kelly? No, I'm just kidding. Bacon, it's her name all <laughs> bacon and, and her daughter were drinking out of the same juice box. <laughs> oh my God. 18. The daughter was 18. He was 21 and she was 45 and you were sleeping with everyone or just the mom? No, just the just the mom. Right, just the mom. Yeah, Aaliyah did do rock the boat. Yeah. Yeah, rock the boat. Oh, that's Aaliyah. Okay, they are wise, know themselves and who they are and what they want, and so comfortable in our own skin. Yep, that's true. Rock the boat is by. Thank right. you, Josh Shakespeare. I knew you could always come in for the corrections. Banana sandwiches. <laughs> Jenny, oh my God. So the guy, I got his, um, you know, I tagged you in his, I hope you guys got messages back and forth with each other. Brian is his name. He asked you as a friend request. Um, just the mom, I'm a good guy. <laughs> Jason said just, just the, the mom. mom. Oh, he's guy. not. Now, yeah. if you want to type out R. Kelly, because R. <laughs> Kelly did, was with one mom and, and He was, daughter, and then yeah. peed on the daughter. Yeah. Uh, and oh, we brought up Aaliyah too, so there you go. R. Kelly, Aaliyah, she was underage. You don't do underage girls, do you? Um, I. I mean, would... do you admit that kind of thing? No, no, <laughs> that was I a do weird not. Question. Um, because I can't even stand. I can't even stand hanging around like twenty-five year olds. So you don't date any like. So you would date older, but just not a little, not like under twenty. Well, I mean, I would say, I would, yeah, I would say someone in their twenties, but they have to be like twenty five or older. I, I think I, I did. Well, because you just have nothing to talk about, really, right? Yeah, I mean, I dated a twenty seven year old. Yeah. 
27. Oh, okay, I'm glad you're gonna you're gonna connect with him soon. Maybe we'll do a live with the three of us. I don't know. A love connection. You see, this could be a love connection. This Jenny found, watched. Are you listening? Yes. Jenny watched. Jenny watched uh, the last kidnapping I did. It was live, and this guy that I met in Italy. And then she was like, "Who is this guy?" So maybe we'll have a love connection. So you never know who's going to see. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, are you are you uh are you Jenny's she can't date 40s. under 30 she can't date under Jenny 30. you're in your you're in your 40s I'm assuming because you're really going hard for a 40 year old woman what who me no Jenny no this was a man this was a man no no I'm talking about Jenny Jenny oh, said she's 40 oh I yeah. can't date under 30 yeah she was really going hard for 40 year old women in the comments. oh yeah a live threesome with Joanne yes there's a hit that's what it's gonna be you next no I don't know Oh, you ne- I'm next now. <laughs> no. Now. Now. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, she's proud. She said, I just she's turned 46. See? You. That's right. Congratulations. Retro. Happy birthday. Cheers. Jenny. I love that. Um, all right, you guys. That's the end of our little segment here. Do you have anything else you want to add? Any uh, personal advice you want to give to the to the youngins out there that are dating? Uh, make sure that you are uh, kings out there. Make sure that you are... Uh, one with yourself and one with the universe. You never know. And make sure that you give the best you can to the world. But also, uh, don't give too much because then people take advantage of it. Kindness goes a long way. Yeah. But they don't, yes, give and take. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming over. I'm going to follow up with you and see if you ever got closure. Do you want closure? I think I got. I think I got what I was expecting. Hmm. All right. Well, let me know if it comes it comes to comes about again. But we're gonna have to do a follow up with you and see how it's going in the streets since you're not a hoe. You might be in the relationship next time, and we are going for tacos. <laughs> in no way that is meant to be sarcastic. Oh, what was sarcastic? Kyle, I don't know what you said. I don't know. You know what? I it's, it takes a takes a lot to offend me. I'm from New Jersey, so I grew up with a lot of sarcasm and, and Italians. And Italians. You know, speaking of which, you know, you were talking about earlier. I went to homecoming with a black guy in my school, and you would think like, you know, no one said anything. No one's not no you were saying like other people were like, "Oh, don't hang out with that guy, whatever, you know, whatever." But like no one said anything to me about any, not my family, not my friends, not, no one said any shit. Because what part of Jersey are you from? Jenny, you're from Jersey too? Oh my God, Brian's from Jersey. Oh, you knew that. That's why you love yeah, me, Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, Pennsylvania is just garbage. Well, and I think New Jersey gets, you know, the Italians, you know, they can, I think. Oh yeah, Italians yeah. can be racist. They, you know, I think everybody can be racist, but there are certain groups that yeah. are more vocal about it. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, what are you doing with my... Yeah, what are you doing over there? Else? What the... Whatever. Why, why are you going to the problem with Bobby Brown? What is... <laughs> what? It's like a Bronx tale, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have hope for the world. I don't know. I, you know, yeah, I still have hope for this world. To come together. Don't be separated. Come together. Love one another. We're all the same. We're all the same. It's all, all people on the inside, everyone. The same. No matter what they say, don't let them separate us. I love you guys so much. New Money Mike loves blue tacos. Maybe we'll meet there. Jason Bacon, Detroit to Jersey. I love you guys. You are so gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Jenny. I appreciate you. We're going to hook that up. I'm going to make that happen. I don't know how. We're going to make that happen, that love connection. You guys have a great day. It was so great to have you here. Four, four, four. Look at all the fours. That's so good. I love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here.